Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life of Desiree's Person of Prominence. Today, I'm hosting a very special guest hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, Mr. Nate Simpson, who is the founder of Black Votes Matter Today. The organization began back in 2012, and it's huge. Black Votes Matter is a nonpartisan, cross-cultural campaign that was designed to advance economic power of Blacks on a whole and to empower the voice of Black voters. Voting day for 2018 happens on Tuesday, November the 6th. Nate Simpson, welcome to my show. It's a pleasure to have you here with me today. It's your boy, Nate Simpson, founder of Black Votes Matters today, kicking it tight and bright with Lady Desiree. Let's get it. Thank you for having me, Lady Desiree. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd rather hear you laugh, too, Des. That's beautiful. Uh, welcome, welcome to your listening audience as well. Yes, yes, I'm excited to speak with you. And, and first and foremost, I wanted to applaud you. For all the efforts you've been doing with Black Votes Matter, you're doing wonderful things. And I want you to tell everybody about your history. How how did you get started? What are the underlying reasons why you were prompted to start the organization in the first place? Well, like everybody, uh, most people, I was in a very arduous situation where I had to make lemonade out of lemons. Uh, I was wrongfully incarcerated. Uh, I was innocent. I went through the whole the torturous behavior of the judicial system, being a black man, uh, not to exclude the black women as well. And in the process of going through that whole scenario, uh, I discovered a lot of things in legislation. And actually, I just decided at that point, you know, I wanted to do something about all the others that were possibly in my same situation, had to go through the same things. And when it all boiled down to it, there was already a blueprint. And the blueprint was already set in 1963 with the voting rights legislation that went into effect in 1968. And it was presented by um, all of our great leaders. I can go into many names, but I think many people already know those pioneers. Yeah. So with that being said, I just picked up the torch and where I was at, and I, I ran the track. I'm running the track still. Yes, you're doing awesome. And you know, I want to talk a little bit about choice. Choice is an important thing to remember for everybody. And so with all that you've done and seen and experienced and, and what you talked about being wrongfully accused, in your opinion, put it into perspective for us. Why is it so important for people to choose to put voting as a priority? And I say choose because it's a choice. People choose to wake up and get out there and go vote. So why is that um something that should be a, a top priority for the um, black community. Well, see, now you have to, you're tapping into my spiritual spirituality at this particular point where you speak about choice. Because yeah. Choice is the number one thing that God gave us all when we were created and he created us. And um, for those that you know, believe in a higher power, uh, it's the one thing that he has vowed to never take from us. So all of us have choices, and it depends on, you know, how you discern and your cognitive um, thought pattern is sorts of choices. And for me, in the country in which we live in, and we see it all around the world, but especially in a country that has is, is you know predicated upon democracy, the one thing that every human being, every man, woman, boy, or girl that is of age has is the opportunity to vote. Um, there may be many things that are restricted from us to have, sometimes even wealth, or several. It goes beyond there. You know, planes, trains, boats, whatever. But voting is the one thing that is a God-given right for all of us to have, just like it is for us to have God-given air. And if you if you really think about that, that's pretty powerful. Oh, it is beyond powerful. And I believe that, you know, people should, you know, take advantage of that and understand how important it is, which leads me to this, because sometimes people don't really truly understand the power that they mm -hmm. have. What have you seen, you know, in your experience in communities, either where you are now or, or otherwise, that is the underlying factor as to why some people um, don't practice their choice to vote? Um, the biggest reason that is prohibiting some, not many, but some, the few that speak in that fashion of not voting, is fear or they feel that their their vote doesn't matter or their voice doesn't matter or their position in life doesn't matter. And this, to me, is a reminder of something that my mom and my dad taught me and my brothers and sisters. They said a person really would throw trash in front of your home 
until they actually own a home themselves and someone throws trash in front of theirs. Then they care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a community that you see that happening in and you wonder why, why did you throw that out of your car window when I'm right past you? And there's garbage cans around you instead of just waiting or going to the gas station. Because those people are, are what is called, in my opinion, just my opinion, they're, they have fear in them that no matter what they do, it's not going to matter, and they, they don't own things. When you own something, you are responsible for it. It's like a woman and a man. Before you have a child, you're not as responsible. You're only responsible for yourself. But if you are a good parent and when you have a child and that child is conceived as a mother, as a father, your entire universe changes. And so, therefore, everything that you are is predicated on what you do that's for the greater good of that child. In the same way with voting, everything that we do is for the greater good of those that came before us that we are beneficiaries of, and it's also our responsibility to keep on that same mantle. It's almost like having grandkids and grandkids' grandkids. Voting is the same way. Every generation gets the opportunity to do something greater or better than the previous one. Yes, they definitely do, and I'd like to, you know, echo that with the fear. Fear being a factor, um, you know, people are, are unsure that, you know, they're going to be making a difference, so they make a choice not to even involve themselves in it because of that that um, that self-talk, you know, in their head about being fearful of, you know, it doesn't really matter anyway, which is an important point that you, you brought up. And we're living in some very interesting times, but also some very <laughs> disturbing times right now. I so. say so. <laughs> I apologize, but yeah, yes, you're right. I apologize. Yeah, it's, it's crazy what we're dealing with right now, and I want to know because you know you're very vocal in your community and all over the United States. What do you think? What are your views on why Trump was voted into office in the first place? And what's your opinion about uh, black people who are actually supporting his agenda? First of all, Trump wasn't voted into the office, and that's something that we need to really just um, parathetically, just homiletically, just put a period on. Trump was not voted into the presidency. Trump um, was, he didn't get the popular vote, and he only got the vote based upon the previous slave owners, slave masters protocol, which is a sub um, vote that they put in in a different capacity. But the people didn't put Trump in. And we also have to come with the conclusion and the actual uh, resolve that um, we were entertained by foreign um, entities that was also invited by Trump. So there's a lot going on. So we don't want to take our eye off the ball or not stay focused because there's a serious investigation going on right now for collusion, treason. Um, a lot of things that go on in countries that actually are very, very serious. So um, from our highest levels of judicial system and our security, from the Pentagon, from the CIA, the FBI, all the national security, uh, they're looking at that right now. And I don't think there's too much that anybody can really deny when an individual goes public and says, if you have information on this person or that person from a foreign entity, then we need to have it and then behind that have meetings in conjunction to that um, message. So um, there's a lot going on. So in my opinion, he did not win the vote. He did not win the vote. He, he entertained a foreign entity that was able to do certain particular things to make some other things happen and also change people's votes and tallies in certain districts and areas of this country. Absolutely. Um, you're right on point with that. And it, it's just disturbing, you know, that uh, so many people that we, we've seen, you know, in the political air today um, are supporting some of the things that he's doing. And that's why I wanted to ask you about black people specifically who are supporting him. What are your views on that? I don't think there's nothing wrong with supporting something that if you feel is beneficial to your family and to your household. Um, families are different. The dynamics of families are different. So if you are um, one of those that have the ability to benefit from those mm-hmm. things, then that's, you're going to go for that. But when you look at the general masses, 85, 90% of the American public aren't benefiting from it. 
um, and to come across and say that your protocol or the things in which you're introducing um, are fresh and new when they're not, when we have to really look back at a couple of things. And if you don't mind, I'm going to take us in deep, if you don't mind. Maybe no, go, go right ahead. Um, okay. The investigation with uh, number 45, Mr. Trump, um, has been going on now for 13 years for his entire empire, his family, everybody. 13 years. If we do the math, which we learned in elementary, junior high, and high school, 13 years ago, we didn't have a first lady, a black first lady. We didn't have a first black president in the in the Obamas. If we look back at that, even 10, the last two years, which number 45 has been in there, two from 13 still leaves us 11 in the math that I have learned growing up in school. So the question is, let's take the 11 from the last two years that he's now been in office and, and President Obama's tenure, which was eight years. So if you go back and you take eight from 11, that would exclude President Obama at that point. So the question is, the prior three years, which are left, who was the president in office at that time that assigned the investigation to begin on the Trump family and Trump empire? And that person who was in office at that particular time was George W. Bush. And mm -hmm. that person was also a Republican. Yeah. So it didn't start with the Mr. Obama. It started before Mr. Obama, and it started with the Republican Party, which already knew that there was a lot of mischievousness going on in the Trump family. Oh, so much so. I mean, my goodness. It just goes on and goes on and goes on. You so know, we're not, so gosh, yeah. it's just it's crazy how when you look back at what you're just saying, the history of it all, people really analyze it. It didn't start with Obama. It started, you know, back um, years before that, and it's been a trickle down effect ever ever since then. So, what are some ways? Um, what are some ways that people, aside from voting? Mm -hmm. Um, can make a positive difference in their communities, like right now. What What are some other ways, things that people can do? Good, good question. Um, there are many things that we can do. First of all, we can uh, be better at policing our own communities um, and look out for our youth and our elders more and look out for suspicious behaviors and to talk to each other. Um, the organization of black people has always been uh, one that has been ecumenical, and we've done this across many, many oceans um, to get it done in different parts of the continent. So black people, just as another factual, um, white people, Caucasian people, are not the dominant uh, culture on the earth, not by far. Mm -hmm. people, people of color are. And then from there you have people which we call um, not black but brown and yellow people. Um, the Caucasian race is fourth or fifth, I believe, if I last recall the numbers, as far as um, a dominant culture. You do the math, and actually they're, they're far behind. So when it concerns black communities and things of that across the country and even existentially in other countries, um, my main focus is what's going on at home. I like, to, I like the old saying, take care of home first. So when it concerns what we can do, we can do uh, policing. We can do um, community activism. Uh, we can do what we call cleaning our own and taking out our own trash, which means that we don't allow things to penetrate our, our communities as much. We need certain things. We need affordable health care, which we've which we had. We need hospitals. We need um, uh, grocery stores. We need schools. We need to have our own banks. Um, we need particular things, um, not just prison reform, but uh, prison reform to the accountability of judges that are actually putting people in there that have um, sidebar um, profits in prisons. Yes, and maybe not, yes. with, maybe not with their particular name on it themselves, but their families or extended family members that have invested and have uh, shares in prisons. So they do it for the lineage of their families. And this has been going on for a long time, but they just it's just systematically now in front of us. So that judge who may have put, you know, 2,000 people in jail over the past two years is profiting. Their family is profiting from that. So all of this is, is, is systemic. Uh, prosecutors, and if everybody is getting paid from the same people, 
you got your judges, you got your prosecutors, you got your uh, attorneys, um, and they all work for either the state or the county. So that means the state or the county is paying them. So right. who do you think you're going to answer to? That's so right. it, these are things that people we need to look at as a whole, and we do that through legislation, and we do that through mandates, and we do that through intel of investigation of knowing a person's um, back track record of how they actually have voted in, in the things and the convictions that they have. Yes, indeed. And, you know, I love that you, you shared that, you know, what people can start doing more of, because I know there, there are many communities who are already doing this, but, you know, policing the community, getting involved, understanding what's going on, what can what can be done to make some of these changes immediately and take yeah. responsibility, you know, for our own things instead of looking to, you know, other resources and people to take care of those things for us. It starts, you know, in, you know, our own communities. And even African-American poet and author Rita Dove said this. She said, there are times in life where instead of complaining, you do something about your complaints. How true are those words in relation to the political climate that we're dealing with today? (laughs) Well, I'll echo that and piggyback that with a poem that I wrote myself. It says, um, in life we go through changes in everything we do. But if you go up or down, you mean as a race, that would depend on you. Some people Mm. try and fail, and some people never try again. Some people never fail, but they have yet to win. So you should grow, learn, and love living in elevation. And we should always be pushing for the elevation. So just because it doesn't seem like we won at this particular point, know that every time we move that stone higher up on that mountain, eventually we're going to be standing up there. And from the First Lady Michelle Obama's words, and I quote her, I quote her dearly because it made me tingle when she said this. She said, you have to get to the point of realizing that every day when I wake up, I have to realize that I'm waking up in a home that our ancestors and slaves built. Oh, yes. Yes. And that that alone should wake people up. It should wake people up. It should. And I love the poem that you shared that you wrote as well. And it just goes to show you, you know, that with choices and with complaining, you know, you you complain and complain and complain, but you got to look at yourself at some point and and ask yourself what is it that you're doing to help um, remedy the things that you don't like, that you're complaining about. What are you doing in your own home, in your own community that's helping to raise awareness of of how we can make some differences, how we can change and, and all those things. And even with schools, I want to talk about schools for a minute, too, because schools are designed to educate our children based on what committees, committees have come together to decide what's important for them um, to learn. So, but how can parents best help their children to learn more about African-American history? You know, the things that they're not exposed to in the classroom, what are your suggestions for that? I think right now that we are seeing people like Chris Paul, um, um, Brother Curry in Golden State, we see Trayvon Green, we see um, LeBron James, we see the Carmelo Anthony, we see Dwayne Wade, we see our sports figures in pro basketball and our sports figures from Kavanaugh to across the board now really setting a standard for us to wake up and not only wake up and smell the coffee, but wake up and drink the coffee. That's right. We need to be a lot more aware and attentive to what they're doing because they're building building these facilities. And these facilities, they're making preparatory standards that public school systems or charter school systems um, cannot adhere to, even though they're doing it somewhat as a tag team or up under the umbrella of a public school or charter school. But the mandates and the stipulations that they put on the parents that they put on the students is all community orientated. And when you have a public school of anywhere in the country, in any urban community or abroad, that is not putting um, community standards on public education, you're not going to be briefed. You're going to be debriefed, but not briefed on totality of American history. We're seeing this right now when we see some of these little riots or whatever's going around, these statues being taken down across the country that actually perpetuated and, and sent it, you know, just gave people synergy to still be a part of um, something that was very cruel to, a, to the humanity of our country and, and people abroad um, that came to this country. 
we see it in immigration right now. So we, when we speak of schools, um, we have to think about those that did not even know the English language when they came here, like African Americans, like people of immigration, and, and they took the time to learn it. So in other words, what I'm saying is if you can learn a different language and a different culture and a different way of living, what's wrong with you also learning and keeping in a core with your own history and your own country? Oh, my God, you know, absolutely. No one said that you had to come here and forget where you came from or forget what was done or why you came just because you decided to come here for a better quality of life. And I think that that's, a, that's a very negative thing that the American people try to perpetrate on people. And it's like um, it's like the um, Panther movie when you're talking Panther about colonizing. Mm -hmm. There's a colonization of that as if you're not supposed to know your history and all that's supposed to be erased. Well, I differ with that. I think that that has been a hindrance of the greatness of what this country actually should be and can be and the possibilities of it. And you don't see no other no other culture, to my understanding, history is is, is requested to be um, deleted, is requested to be vacated from public schools, except the black culture of Africa. And that's because... Um, when you do people wrong, it's kind of hard to look them in the face and tell them you need to learn this, but I, but I don't want to tell you what I did to your grandparents and your That's grandparents. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You hit the nail That's on the head right. with that one because it, it's true. You know, I've noticed that the same thing that you're talking about, you know, it's like, you know, people want, you know, these committees who are organizing these textbooks and getting things together want us to delete that portion of history from the face of everything, like it didn't exist. And that, that can't be, we can't allow that to be done, which is why I wanted to ask you what, can, you know, parents do within their own homes, you know, those who are concerned and every parent should be concerned about, you know, educating their, their children. You know, they're the future. They, they hold the world in their hands. So it's important that you mention that, um, you know, people who are organizing, organizing schools, you know, across the country and, and trying to better develop, just like, you know, your organization of Black Books Matter, trying to better develop um, people's minds and understand that, you know, we have a vast history that needs to be um, showcased instead of hidden. You know, history has a tendency to repeat itself. And without um, knowing history, that's exactly what happens. And the youth of today need to understand that there were, you know, people way before them who have put things in motion um, that may not have always worked out the way it was intended to, but things have been put into motion. So thank you for sharing that with everybody. Yeah, Lady, yeah, Lady Dez, um, you know, I really want to give a shout out to all the unsung pioneers and heroes that names never made it on the marquee, on the front page that put it in and for whatever given reason only a small group of people um, gave them tribute. Um, I think that those little sandstones or little cobblestones are the foundation of everything that we've done so those big mammoth stones can even um, be, be in front of us. So I just want to give a shout out and I, and I try to always in my inner spirit just remember there are so many days in the month and we only sometimes focus on Sunday. Um, yeah. But the other days, other days are just as important. That's our people. Um, they even do what we're doing today on this on this phone. Um, and it's not to, you know, in any way minimize your, you or I, but um, we're in the media. A lot of people don't have this. A lot of right. people don't have this kind of name or title of saying I'm the founder and CEO of the organization or this or that. A lot of people are doing what they can in their own in their own abilities to do what they can, and I just want to give a shout out to them and tell them that we're watching and we love you and we need you, and all hands on deck, all hands on deck. Whether you're a pom pom person, whether you're a street sweeper, whether you're a light bulb turner, um, whatever your role is, whether you're first string, second string, whatever your role is, whether you're a home run hitter or you're a touchdown catcher, uh, whatever you are right now, where, wherever you are. We need all hands on deck for this election. This election in 2018 is going to be the most prominent, and I guarantee you, in the history of this country, there's not going to be a midterm ever that has matched the one that's going to show up and show out in this particular one in 2018, and for all the right reasons.
That's right. And that was that's powerful what you just said, you know. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing for a living, what your job is, you know, everybody, all hands on deck is important. And that's part of your whole organization's message to everybody that black votes matter. It matters no matter what you may think, other people think about if it matters or not. It matters to the whole entire world and the state of the world today needs some help. So it definitely matters. So how can people find out more um, about Black Votes Matter? What can they do? Where can they go online? Um, you can go right now. We have an online, blackvotesmatterstoday.com. You'll see us there, which is our official website. We have another official website on Facebook, which is Black Votes Matters Today. Um, then we have a multiple of sister and brother tag um, websites as well that people use the same name or they come up under our umbrella. And we did that. Um, purposely, um, but sometimes you don't, if you, you know, they destroy the head, you know, they're all saying it destroys the, the whole thing. So we wanted to make sure we had branches, and we, we use that as a good grapevine to, to stretch out in multiple areas. But you can go on Black Votes Matters today, which is Facebook. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of members in that, and we're the, uh, I think now we, we were in the top 100 as far as growing organizations on Facebook. I think now we've reached down to 74 as far as, and Facebook does this, uh, their own category, surveys of this, and that's how I get the numbers to see where we are as far as how we're growing in the members that we have. So go on Facebook and um, join, and if you have a friends list, you know, put all your friends on there. You know, if they decide that they want to be removed, then tell them that they have that opportunity. But you being a good steward, it's good for you to ask your friends and your friends at their friends so that we can rapidly grow and we can create what is called a voice to be a dynasty. Our whole thing is a lot of people talk about economics, and our thing should be economics and power, not just mm-hmm. economics. But, you know, you can focus on money, and then you can forget that some people have things that money is needed for, and then you can lose that money like they have done now in this last three or four weeks on walls, on stock. And you thought that you had everything, and now they found that everything that they thought that you thought they gave you has now been raped from you. And that's another thing that's a smoke and mirrors with this whole thing, with this election of number 45. Um, it, it should be very clear to the American public by now. I don't know. If, I don't know why it's not. If it's not that it was all smoke and mirrors. See, the top, the top two percent never lose money on Wall Street. Never, never means never, because. They have what is called blue chip companies that are designed to lose money so that they can have tax write-offs when they lose money to take the money from those that do lose money and it profits them. So you have to understand this is how the economics of this country is. But if you had your little 30000 or your 40000 or your $150,000 in there and it crashed and burnt and now you wind up maybe having 500 to $2,000 or $12,000 in your account, you're not getting that money back. You're not getting your life savings back. It's a wrap. you got to go another 10, 12, 15 years or maybe hit a lick on Wall Street with an investment company again to even get near that breaking even point. So all that what you thought you had is gone. It's gone. Over the last week and a half, those two major crashes or three crashes, it, it wiped out everybody's thing. So here we are again. So what you going to do? You're going to keep getting bamboozled like Malcolm X said, or you're just going to keep buying into it? Okay. Or should you do like President Obama did and save the auto business, save us from the worst depression that we had since the Great Depression, and then let somebody else come in and take credit for it? That's crazy. That is you wouldn't crazy. work all your life to do that. You wouldn't work all your life to let that happen to you. You work all your life and then give it to your neighbors. No, you'd be like, that's my grandkids. That's my granddaughters. That's my grandsons. That's that belongs to my wife or that belongs to my husband or my children. But you're not going to let your neighbor tell you that you need to give it to them. So that's what, you, that's what you'll be doing if you vacate yourself from voting right now. That's look at it just from an economic, look at it just from an economic point of view. Yeah, many people are working, but also many people are getting disenfranchised and underpaid to do certain things. But guess when the greatest part of employment was? It was when slavery was here. Mm, wow. That's something to think about. That's something to think about. The greatest that's employment something in the to think about. was slavery. So just because you get fifteen dollars an hour now, but you still can't make ends meet, you got to have two jobs. What do you think you're doing when you can't take care of your children? When your children don't get quality time with you, or your husband and your wife, you can't get quality time with them. 
But you think you're working, and you are working, but you've given up so much more, which is your family. And you're giving right, up your family. right. To, like, what ends, you know, to... Okay. What, what is going to happen when people just wake up, like you're saying, and, and actually figure things out for themselves and understand that, you know, they have to have a voice in, in these elections. You know, our, our future depends on, on all of these things that you are saying. And uh, the more awareness people can have about life and economics and, and everything, the better um, we're going to become. So mm-hmm. Nate Simpson, you and your organization are doing wonderful, wonderful things. I'm so happy that we were Thank able you. to speak on these things today. I, I wish you nothing but continued success with the Black Votes Matter movement as it continues to con- empower people around the world. You're doing awesome things. So thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, ladies. Uh, um, I think that you also are doing great things. Uh, your, your portfolio of people that you have been engaging with prior to this particular phone call is enchanting. And um, I see um, that you have what is called zeal in you and stick to itiveness and, and, and a self-drivenness about you. So um, I, I'm sure that um, this particular situation that we're talking about today, uh, I look forward to hopefully maybe you bringing us back and uh, we can continue to inform the people. Thank you very, very much. I love those words. Thank you so much. Hello. Make your vote matter.